Wadcast Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Eft. Each and every week, no matter what, no matter what, there could be a recession, a pandemic. Wait, there is. Uh, I come to you every week. I bring you a show. We talk about health, fitness, strength, conditioning, just being an elite motherfucker. And uh, the, now we're in some unprecedented times. And so we talk about whatever, you know. Uh, whatever's going to make you healthier, stronger, happier, get you through this, I'm here for you, hopefully in an entertaining way. Uh, got a great episode with my former co-host, Armin Hammer. Armin Amirian's his real name, but he's got a stage name. It's Armin Hammer. If there's anybody that knows everything about CrossFit, it's Armin. He's on the show today to talk to you all about that. We have a good conversation, and um, we let you in on the status of CrossFit affiliates, the CrossFit competitions. And just what everybody's doing. Um, You guys, thank you for supporting the show. These are some tough times. I'm not here to beg. I'm just going to tell you that now that I am not touring, this is it for me. This is all I'm doing is this show. So please keep supporting. If you can, go to our Patreon, help out, donate. Uh, It's patreon.com slash wadcastpodcast or wadcastpodcast.com slash Patreon. You can go in there. You can donate. If you donate uh, anywhere up to from five bucks and up, you get yourself into uh, kind of a uh, a raffle. I don't know what it is, but you end up maybe winning a Myopux or a Leopard Claw. Myopux is an electronic muscle stimulator. You're going to need that now. Uh, and uh, the Leopard Claw is this awesome multi-tool device that you use to scrape all the adhesions. The Myopux is a uh, – it, it stimulates your muscles, makes you flush blood, makes you uh, – who knows? Might be the cure for COVID. It's good stuff. I use it every single time I'm injured. Every single time. I use it to expedite the inflammatory process. I don't take Tylenol. I don't take ibuprofen. I don't ice. I do what people, experts like Gary Reinel say to do. And that is hook up an electronic muscle stimulator and flush all that bad blood out into your lymphatic system. Get one of these. If you donate five bucks or up, that's it. That's like a dollar an episode. If you really enjoy this show, you might, you know, you know what? You might be having a tough time, though, so I don't expect anything of you. If you are having a tough time, you still love the show, do me a favor. Go rate, review, and comment on uh, on iTunes. or uh, Yeah, iTunes. Just rate, review, comment. Helps us with the algorithm. You don't know what that means, but just do it, please. Um, I hope you're not in tough times. If you are, if there's anything we can do, send us a message. You know, Maybe we can uh, help out your gym or help out somebody in need somehow through the show. So drop us a line. If you can at wadcast podcast at yahoo.com. I know these are just like I said, it's tough times for everybody. Uh, nobody's immune to this. And uh, uh, some people are worse than others. And if there's any way, like I said, any way we can help, let us know. Uh, one of my favorite sponsors is out there really helping the affiliates. Um, O2, O2 recovery drink is uh, the best tasting recovery drink out there. And it's formulated with uh, with basically the right amount of sodium potassium that you would get in an IV. So when you're recovering after a workout, uh, there's nothing better for you. It's also oxygenated. They pump oxygen into the water, into the drink, so that uh, you get oxygen into your, into your uh, bloodstream and it actually detoxifies your liver. It's great stuff. It's made by a doctor and a CrossFitter. Uh, they came up with this. Um, I got my dad drinking. My 84-year-old dad drinks it now because he needed to get his electrolytes up. He goes to Whole Foods and gets it. They've got it everywhere. You can go to drinko2.com. But let me tell you what these guys are doing. These are good, good, good guys. Really good guys. I know them. I, I really enjoy talking to them. I appreciate um, – I've met with them. They've been guests on the show. I'm a big fan of theirs. And they're – doing something really great right now for a limited time they're offering 50 percent off two to four week supplies of o2 and i'm telling you in these times when people are hoarding and thinking about stuff to have there's nothing better you could have in your refrigerator right now than something like this i mean they always talk about like if you i don't want to say hey you might get sick i don't want to be one of these fear-mongering people but even if you do get the flu or you get a cold or you get covid or you get anything like that, you're going to need to keep your electrolytes up. And there's no better way to do it than this uh, because it's low in sugar. It has like next to no sugar in it. You know, they use 
um, natural sweeteners and stuff like that. Um, so if you want to get 50% off a two to four week supply of O2, that's one to four cases and free shipping, drink O2.com. This is capped at four cases, They're not doing more than four cases. Well, the demand of, for water is high and the supply is low. So they're contributing 50% of profits from this sale to support affiliates. That's right. Um, here's how they're going to do it. You type in drinko2.com, okay, and uh, the prices are already marked down, and just type your affiliate name in your order notes, and then they're going to send money to your affiliate. Have, have you heard anything that good? I mean, way, way to go. I mean, we talk in the episode about keeping affiliates alive, keeping this thing going strong. Well, these guys are doing what they can to help out. They're giving 50% of their profits to support affiliates. So help yourself, help O2, help your affiliates. Go to drinko2.com. Type in that affiliate name too. And even if you don't have an affiliate, type in another one because they're all going to need it. Um, so I think I better start this episode. Oh, I just want to let you know, uh, I'll be touring. Uh, if you want to see me live, you can see me at, nope, you can't not for a while guys, not till we get the, uh, you know, things are getting better and, uh, you can come back out again. But until then, uh, watch me live on Instagram. Almost every night I do a show live from my living room where I do about 10 minutes of new material on Instagram. So go to at Eddie Ift on Instagram. You can watch me there and uh, hopefully laugh and then someday come out and see me live. But I hope you guys all are healthy, well, strong. If you need anything, like I said, send us a message if we can help out in any way. And uh, get if you have a message to get out there, you need something done. And uh, please, please, um, sometimes stuff gets lost in the shuffle. And I forget or, you know, the email falls down in my inbox. If I've missed anything, let me know because I really do like to help out you guys and get your words out there. Whatever you need done, let me know. Stay healthy. Keep your hands clean, you savages. Just wash under those nails, you know what I mean? And Clorox bleach everything and get in a bubble. Run around in a bubble. Just let's all, let's all kill this virus all right um social distancing you guys ready for this episode with armin well here it comes ladies and gentlemen welcome to the wadcast podcast i often say it's a very special episode but These are strange times, and strange times call for strange guests. The guest tonight is not really a guest. He's a former host of the show, and we had one of those last week. We had Kenny Kane. So it's like like reunion week. Um, Yes, our guest tonight, none other than Scott McGee. (laughs) <laughs> no uh, hey we've hey got, everybody i'm really happy to be here we uh, uh my guest tonight is armin amirian uh armin That's hammer me. some of you know him um <clears throat> armin hit you let me hear you so i can hear your levels real quickly check check one two okay How's that sounds that like good you sound good i sound too loud but that's just me in general in life um so anyway uh Armin, I thought it'd be really good to have you on the show tonight because um, we're these are the end of days. I'm it is. Pr- it absolutely is. I'm pretty sure this is the end of the world, and uh, I, I'm and you think I'm joking? I I really do think this is it. Uh, the first sign of the apocalypse was the is the Antichrist. We got Trump. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I, as soon as as soon as he won, I'm like, that's it. We're all going to die. The end of the world. So, um, but more than anything, I I think it might be the end of CrossFit. I think. Are this, you are you like are you like Mad Max preparations right now? Oh, Do you fuck, have like a, yeah. like a rusted truck with spikes and skulls all over it? Have, shoot have you ever seen the Bingle Bus? <laughs> <laughs> that's really good that's a good point that's a good point <laughs> the horns are on the front i'm ready to go 
Oh, you're so ready. I got my kid in the woods teaching her how to use a slingshot. The other kid I'm feeding just <laughs> steak all day long. He doesn't even have teeth yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Dude. I'm totally ready for it. I've been training my whole life for this. Uh, on a on a side note, I am training right now. I began today. I didn't really train, but I committed mentally. Uh, Hunter McIntyre is going to try to break the Murph world record. Yeah, he called me about that not too long ago. Of course yeah. he did. He needs his publicity. He's you know, but he's going to do it the the right way with the vest, hundred, two hundred, three hundred, and the mile runs. Yeah, I told him that I will beat him. No vest, and I get to partition. I think that's going to be close. Yep, and uh, <laughs> a friend of ours, a friend of ours, wanted to bet a thousand and back me. Uh, I mean, listen, I don't think I think if I was going to take any end of that, I would take your end because it has the upside. But because he's the favorite, 100 percent, he's the favorite in that. But, uh, you know, it, it'll, it's going to be close. Like, he's told not, me he's told me the times he's already gotten and they're scary. Is he going like he, so when I so I don't know if you want if you want to say what the times were, but when I, when he called me, he was like, what's a good time? And I was like, well, the only way you can really compare it is if you do it the way they did it at the games, like. You have to have a judge with you the entire time. You have to film the entire thing across, like, you know, measure out your miles and have that on on camera. And if you beat those guys, like you're you're already doing some pretty crazy work. But the closer you get to 30 minutes, like the more gnarly the entire thing becomes 30 and minutes. He was, like, he was like, OK, OK, 30 minutes, 30 like, I think minutes. I break. Yeah, he was talking about how he thinks he could break it. And I was like. Yeah, I mean, if you partitioned, you could probably break thirty minutes. But like straight through with a weight vest, like thirty minutes is booking it. Dude. I can't, I can't get to thirty without even partitioning and with. Uh, I mean, maybe if I just do push ups and pull ups all day long and run miles. To, no, it's I can't do it. I've got the I've got the strategy to to your to t- win that. Your two four six the two four six dude sucks. It's the best way of sucks. doing it. Sucks. Doesn't work for me. I'm a five. I'm a five. Wait, what do I do? I oh, go, you, do you like do you like the the five push up, five pull up, uh, yep, five push up, fifteen yep, squat? Yeah. Yep, five, five, fifteen, five, 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 fifteen, five. That's how I do it. Um, and I still couldn't do it. No way, no way. The fastest, I mean, the fastest Murph I've ever done is he's gonna he's gonna blow it out of the water by like six seven minutes easy what's your easy. fastest i don't know i think i did I, i've done sub 40 before yeah I doing the two four six yeah. thing i but I, like he's he's easily gonna beat it by six or seven minutes sub 40 simple for me i'm talking like my goal would be like 34 and if yeah he, if he's gonna go 30 i'm gonna get cru- I'm, I'm getting out of this bed if he's going to like around 30 what do you think the world record is um, I think I mean, Scott can, even I can, did it. I think Scott said he did it in like 28 without a vest. Yeah, without a vest, it, it becomes like for Scott, like especially for Scott. You know, what I mean, he's so he's so good at pull ups and he's so good at uh, uh, running and he doesn't care. Like the weight vest doesn't really slow him down very much. So I think Scott would pre- be able to like put up a pretty competitive time on something like Murph, with but, but no i'm saying without the vest i think scott did it like 28 or something oh yeah that that's crazy there's guys that's... out there there's guys out there that are calisthenic freaks though that this would not be a problem but again you know hunter runs like a 415 mile yeah that's the thing it's the miles it's the miles that are going to be the really big yeah so the fastest time at the games that year was was thirty eight thirty six, but they're not partitioning. It makes a straight massive through. difference. Yeah, massive. That was, that was a straight through. Okay, so I know Hunter's already beat them. I and I don't. I don't doubt that. Yeah, I mean he he should. He yeah. should. It's like the perfect workout for him. Right. But there's guys out there. So last year we all did it uh, down at CrossFit Malibu. They brought in like a whole bunch of like all stars. It was like a crazy day, and. Uh, a whole bunch of us did it, and there was a guy there who I think it was like he's not a CrossFitter. He just somebody brought him, and he was like Delta Force in the military, of course. And he flew. I mean, this guy. It was like around there, around like thirty four or something, dude. Uh, or no, not thirty four. Yeah, maybe. But he was partitioning, 
and he was wearing the wave. It was it was like the guy was ridiculous, but he, he was also so, like he was wearing a shirt that said Murph on it. So he yeah, like, that's, he probably knew him. You know what I mean? Like he lives for here's this. The, here's the thing. Like I also, know, by people, the way, by the way, I didn't see. I was doing it with him, so I didn't see any of his standards. Sure, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Like a yeah. lot of people, um, a lot of people sort of lose sight sometimes of of how good like great crossfitters are versus just how good some people are at certain things like right. you know who Jocko is of course yeah. you know who Jocko is do you see Jocko put up a workout he did recently like he very rarely shares any of his actual workouts he like posted this workout that he did recently like one part of it was one up to 20 of strict pull-ups rest and then 20 back down to one. Oh god so that's like 200 plus strict pull-ups for a guy that's like a gorilla, strict. He weighs like two forty. Mm. So you're talking about there. There are like monsters out there who have spent fifteen years. Like Hunter. Hunter is one of these guys. That's why is so good for him. He's yeah, one he, of these he guys does. He does his so many life pull, doing so many pull ups. So many pull ups. Climbers too. You know, the pull ups have never been my issue. The push ups are always my issue. He should. He should go head to head. Bobby should be doing. The head to head with them, not you. Nah, Bobby. Bobby gets too competitive, and Bobby would cheat, and then he'd break Hunter's nose. Something would happen. Uh, Bobby's busy coming up with like an immune booster right now that's going to like get everybody out of coronavirus. He literally so he, is coming up with like some kind of immune system thing that he, 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 I don't know. I believe in him. Maybe Bobby's going to be the uh, Bobby's going to be able to stop the apocalypse for you. Uh, Bobby's Bobby's good in apocalyptic situations. I went to get him when the fires were happening in Malibu because he had a broken heel because he fell 30 feet from rock climbing without a rope. Of course. And well, he, he had a rope on, he clipped out of the rope to go help a guy that was like stuck. Then when he went back to his, like where he was climbing, he didn't clip back in. And when he got to the top, he thought he was clipped and he went to rappel off the wall and just hit the floor. Broke his calcaneus, and um, so when the fires happened, I went to get him out of his house because I knew he was there with all his animals. And he's like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "I'm nothing. Just a wildfire's about to just mow over you." And I was like, "Can you get in the car?" And he's like, "Well, where are we going?" I'm like, "Uh, to live." And uh, he has all these animals. I was like, "Where's the crates for the cats?" And he's like, "We don't have crates." I'm like, "Well, how do we get the cats in the car?" He goes, "I don't know. They've never been in a car." And I'm like, "What? What do we do?" He's like, "Put them in a bag." <laughs> put them so, in a bag. <laughs> so he put his cats in a bag. Uh, but it took literally. I'm not joking. It took maybe two hours to evacuate him because he was getting all his supplements, every like grounding mat he had. He did some pull-ups. He was like, you got to train for this. And I was like, not like as it's coming to us. You tr you did your training. And uh, he put on Mount Everest glasses, you know, the kinds. He goes, these will shield the fire. He was completely ready. I love ready. Bobby so much. So I started driving away from the fire to like get us down to Santa Monica. And he's like, where are you going? He's like, go back. And I'm like, what? He's like, to the fire. And I was like, <laughs> Why? And he's like, we got to see what we can do. I'm like, you can't do it. You're on crutches. And I'm like, all this can happen is I'm going to die because of you. And he was like, we're not going to die. And then the next thing I know, I was living in the fire for five days with Bob. Good for good for you guys. Yeah. You, ha you do a really good impression of him. You spent you guys spend a lot of time together because your impression of him is spot on. He is not worried about coronavirus in the least bit. He's like, bro, dude, I've been doing this my whole life i've been ready for this my my immune system it's like come on you can inject it into me it'll kick it right out he's uh he's not afraid um i'll tell you what i the coronavirus is not funny but uh yes it is i mean there are aspects of it that are funny one of them is there are so many things about it that are funny in the pittsburgh accent <laughs> that's that says more about the pittsburgh accent than it does about covid Yin's got the COVID. Yin's got it. How about this one? Yin's quarantined. Dude. Yin's on quarantine. 
quarantine. Are you doing this? Is this is are you doing this on your nightly like no, IG no, live? No, nobody knows the Pittsburgh accent except for some CrossFitters because they know Scott Pancheck's dad. <laughs> and that's the only reason people know it. But John Ware knows it, uh, but no one else gets it. But it's so fucking funny. I've been talking. I was on the phone last night with a doctor friend who is a, a kidney specialist that went to pit with me. And he's like, dude, this COVID, um, I don't know. I don't know. And I was like, can, I, was, I kept going, can you say COVID again? And then my daughter says coronavirus. And for some reason, she says it like, uh, who is the chicken raising Arizona? Uh, uh, Holly Hunter. Is it Holly Hunter? Really? I don't know. But she says it like Holly Hunter from Silence of the Lambs. Or she goes, coronavirus. <laughs> 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 Nothing <laughs> else. I'm telling you, coronavirus. I'm, I filmed her. She was like, don't show anyone. I don't want, I feel bad because she doesn't like want anyone to know. I don't, she doesn't mean to even do it, but it's so funny. Coronavirus. Uh, here, I got her to finally say it on film. Let me see if I got her to do it. I love you very much. You're my favorite mommy. I oh, love she's talking to her mom. I have to, like, promise her a treat. Will you do it for mommy? That's fantastic. Here it comes. Close your mouth and put your ear. She doesn't want me to laugh at her. <laughs> she has she has a legit southern drawl when she says that that's amazing that's amazing oh my god that's coronavirus so <laughs> coronavirus all right let's get to the shit is uh is it is it going down in austin are people scared i'm sure there's Texas high... is a whole different world, dude. But no not Austin is, is not like the rest of Texas. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. I'll tell you this. So it, it was today's Friday. It's, it's Friday night. Okay, so Tuesday is when the shelter in place rules came down in Austin. Tuesday. Okay. And Katie and I like have been walking the dogs every day. So you still allowed to ba- do that? Yeah, yeah. So we've been we've basically been shelter in place ourselves for the past like week and a half because we were traveling. We were abroad. We we're in Montreal for a CrossFit event that got postponed while we were. You there. can't call that abroad. That's over okay, a border. Well, I, oh, we were we weren't we were traveling, right? right and right. I have been I've been traveling a ton anyway, so I've been to all these like big events over the past couple months. And I was like, all right, let's just let's chill it. Let's get let let's stay at home for a little bit. So we've been staying at home anyway. Uh, and the shelter in place rules came in um, Tuesday. And we've been walking around and we went to like the grocery store once since then. And it's been like fine, but the the sort of like foot traffic is not as low as I expected it to be. Like we still see, you know, people driving, like lots of people driving. We still see people around the neighborhood. So I think people are way, way, way more chill about it now than than they maybe like should be. But everyone's kind of keeping their distance. I see everybody using hand sanitizer like. It's not quite as apocalyptic as it is in L.A. where like Tyler Nilsson was posting a photo of, you know, Sunset Boulevard at like 6 p.m. on a Friday and it was dead. There's no cars on the road. I haven't left. By the way, Tyler's film is phenomenal. Isn't Um, it so good? I watched on a plane. I was like in tears. I wrote to him. I was like, dude, that's the best film of the year. Um, If you know what I'm talking about, it's uh, the peanut butter falcon and watch it now that you're on lockdown. I'm so shocked that it wasn't nominated for Me too. Oscars. Me too. I was like, this is bullshit. Yeah, it was It was one of the best films I saw of the year. That and yeah. un, uh, Uncut Gems or whatever it's called. I didn't get to see Uncut Gems. I didn't like their last movie. I thought it was a little too aggressive for me. I was like... Oh, this, this one's aggressive too, but it's great. Yeah, yeah it's super intense. Um, so I haven't left my neighborhood since the 9th of March. <laughs> wow. Are you okay? Y- yeah, I just... I pretty much put myself on a 14-day quarantine because... Quarantine. Um, yeah, you has got to put yourself on a quarantine. Cause well, you, you're also a bit of a, you're hypochondriac. a, a hypochondriac. Well, I, I came back from Australia on the 8th. 
So oh, okay. I yeah, flew. That makes sense. I flew. Came through the airport. No one was taking temperatures. No one was doing anything. They asked me one question as I was getting on the plane. They're like, "Have you been to China in the last two weeks?" And I'm like, "No, I haven't." Okay, get on. Um, so I've been. They today just said we can't even walk on the trails, which seems really weird because that does seem really weird i think you know everybody was walking up runyon canyon and there was probably like seven when they said go outside it's safe to be outside just don't be in places with high traffic the next thing you know the entire all of la went to the beach and it was like a summer day at the yeah. beach uh so the guys told me they were surfing the guys are out there like coughing on them i was like oh god i don't want to go surfing so uh so they shut down the beaches. They You can't go surfing. And then it was like, okay, well, we can still go on the trails. Well, I think that's for most of L.A. Like, my backyard is all trails. So I think I can still go out there because I can go out there and I won't see a human being for yeah. forever. Which is pretty dope. Yeah. But for everyone else, must this must suck to just be. You know, I, I, I yeah. You know, because for me... I, I'm in my office. I built this to be a studio that I could spend all my time in. Like it's designed for me to be here in person to use it. So it doesn't bother me at all. Um, this isn't very different from what I would want to be spending my time doing anyway. Like hanging out with the dogs, hanging out with Katie, working out in the garage, making content. So for me, it's not that big of a difference. And oh, it's not for, for me the, either. And that's the thing, like for, for most of the people that I interact with on a regular basis, it's like, yeah, we're cool. But we also tend to all have really non-traditional like jobs and stuff, right? You know, the people that I know that are, are man, they work at, they work like a nine to five or whatever in management at some like tech company and they have to work from home and they can't leave the house or they have to, they can only leave the house like really rarely. Like that's a much, much bigger ask. Like it, it, it uh, really wears. I'll everything. tell you who I feel sorry for. My wife. <laughs> she's losing her mind because of me being here all the she's so used to me being on the road yeah and i'm here 24 hours a day and she has her whole system in place and her structure and i'm like izzy time for a dance party <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like come on let's get dressed for it and my wife's like no 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 she's got to go to online school and i'm like no she doesn't uh daddy needs to dance so um yeah single people horrendous relationship people no kids best life ever yeah there's there's uh i i can't imagine how lonely it must be if you're like at, at a certain point it just it just it must be really rough it must be really rough if you're if you're on your own and kind of stuck like this like you you almost would rather like find some friends oh i i'd i'd go to um uh what's the company we use elysian that was a sponsor of the show that does home testing. They have a test kit you can buy for like 130 some dollars. You just call them. You get your own test. I'd be, if I was single, I'd be like on Tinder, just being like, Hey, you want to come over? I'm going to have you tested. <laughs> you pass the test. Get we, after it. Hell yeah. We can hang. <laughs> we're going to have, a, yeah. we're going to have a nice couple months together. Uh, Armin knows everything about, gyms and i'm sure armin has used wattify before because they ran a successful gym and wattify is the best all-in-one gym management software for every crossfit gym if you're a gym owner go to visit wattify.com slash wadcast that's visit wattify.com slash wadcast wattify spelled w-o-d-i-f-y you're probably all familiar with it because you go into the gym a lot and you use it uh, but it's used for much more than just signing in or filling out your waiver. Um, there's so many other things. And all the best gyms use it. Everyone from Jason Kalipa, Pat Barber, Miranda, and Julian Alcaraz. See, I said it right. When I was with him, I called him Julio. Um, it's basically software. It does all-in-one gym management. It's designed for CrossFit by CrossFitters. Um, it'll take care of your classes, your appointments, your billing, your waivers, your reporting, much more. And it's easy. You go on the site. 
It's transparent pricing. There's no hidden fees, okay? You're not going to get into this and then find some bill that you got because you had more members. doesn't matter. And if you're already on some kind of software system, it's easy to switch over. And they've done it for thousands of gym owners, and they provide a dedicated onboard specialist to help you do this. So you're just going to call up. They're going to take care of you. They're going to walk you through it. it. This is ideal for any size of gym. It doesn't matter if you've got four members or you've got 400 members. doesn't matter. You're going to you're going to pay, you're not paying by the name or by the number of your members. Um, so like I said, they're going to walk you through it, but there's integrations from QuickBooks, Zapier, MailChimp, other software. So if you're using that stuff, that stuff isn't made specifically for CrossFit. This is, if you own an affiliate, this is made for you. They got world-class support, webinars, e-learning academy, um, and so many other helpful resources. Uh, they were, uh, uh, I guess, the original digital whiteboard. They had like 230 million performances logged. How funny is that? 230 million. Uh, and here's one of the things that they've proven, that clients who track their workout performances are three times more likely to renew their memberships. So, you know, you want to keep these people, They they can check their you know they they log in they're going to put how they did at the end of the end end of the workout and then they're going to get to see their progress and when people see progress they want to continue so this promotes engagement it's going to improve your attendance accuracy when clients post their results you're going to be able to keep clients motivated to improve their performance and it's everything it's going to you know create better experiences with your members positive relationships all kinds of stuff so like i said it's a fully integrated website for your gym, seamless integration. For a limited time, there's no setup fee for new customers. Do you hear me? Limited time, no setup fee, new customers. It's SEO optimized. Uh, it's It loads 200 times faster than the competitor. It's clean. It's it's amazing. You've you've probably seen it. If you've been if you're not using it, you're crazy. They've got all kinds of stuff. They've got a, a WAD marketplace. They've also got Wattify Pulse which I've used, which I think is great, where they do group heart rate monitoring. Um, so you can look up on the boards and see where you are and how you're doing heart rate wise, you know, cause you might be crushing someone in the workout, but your heart rate's going through the roof and they, they might be getting a different stimulus than you. Um, you know, y- y- there's so much to heart rate monitoring and I love that they have this. Um, and it adds an additional revenue stream to your gym. Listen again, 20% off your first year of what if I core, Okay, that's 20% off. Uh, You got to mention Wadcast podcast on your intro demo call, though. Okay, so be like, hey, I heard about you on the Wadcast podcast. I want to add you guys. Uh, So go to wadify.com slash Wadcast for more information. And uh, trust me on this one. It'll if you're not using it, you just aren't in business. You're not in the CrossFit business. Get yourself a Wadify. 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 W-O-D-I-F-Y. Make sure you mention us too. All right. Do you guys know what is the most important thing to uh, your performance? Yeah, some of you are going to say uh, working out. No. Nah. Some of you are going to say your diet. No. Nah. Some of you are going to say uh, your sex life, you perverts. No. No. It's your sleep. It's all about your sleep. I got a wife who's been telling me this for years about how important sleep is. She sleeps about 22 hours a day. She then bumbles around and drinks for an hour and then goes back to sleep. She's staring at right, me right now. She wants to murder me. I'm just kidding. But she has always told me how important sleep was, and I didn't believe her. And then I started wearing a whoop, and I found out I wasn't sleeping enough. Oh, my God. And I found out why I was overtraining. And why everything was wrong. And I found out sleep is so important. Then I found out, oh no, I can't sleep. How can I sleep better? Well, I started taking some magnesium. Oh, that helped a little bit, but not enough. Then I found out about Clova. Clova is going to change your life. If you want to get the best sleep quality, you're not getting enough, and you want to sleep, you want to improve your sleep quality, there's a thing called the Sleep Z Patch by Clova. It's now the number one selling sleep patch online on Amazon 
and it's uh, available at Walgreens. Uh, it's got over a thousand five star reviews. Do you know anyone with that? I don't know anyone with a thousand five star reviews. Well, they do because people love this thing. Okay, all you're gonna do, like, how does this thing work? It's a patch, like a nicotine patch. You know what I'm talking about? You're going to put it on about two hours before you go to bed. And then, like, maybe you eat your dinner, you throw it on, you watch some TV, you go to bed. When you go to bed, it's time-released. So the blend naturally, it's got, like, a, a um, it's got all these uh, naturally occurring ingredients. They're going to go to work promoting restful sleep. Um, go to their website. Check out Clova, it's K-L-O-V-A, to see all the ingredients in there that help you and scientifically, clinically proven to help you sleep. Um, it's uh, it's ideal. If you're having trouble falling asleep, try Clova. And if it's not working, they got a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can try it hassle-free. Uh, you can save 20% on your first order today by using the claim code WADPOD20. That's WADPOD20. W O D P O D 20. So go to clova.com. That's clova, K L O V A.com. I love that name, clova. Clova. That just relaxes me, doesn't it? Makes you want to sleep when you hear it. Clova. Are you having trouble sleeping? Well, try clova. Put on the clova patch. Clova.com. Use the code WADPOD20. You're going to save 20% off. Go get it and go to sleep. My brother's my 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 middle brother has three kids under the age of five. He's dead. Yeah, that's, it's it's horrible, I, dude. It's horrible. I, I can't imagine. It's dude. a nightmare. My, imagine. my my son wakes up at five thirty in the morning every morning, every morning. Five thirty. He's a big fan of Jocko Willing. <laughs> uh, he gets more done before nine a.m. <laughs> this kid eats so much food. He's like the size of. We took him to the doctor. And Izzy and him both got their checkups, and the doctor's like, so Izzy's in the 70th percentile, which is great in both height and weight. It's great. And Cruz, um, he's off the charts. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean off the charts? Like, it only goes to 100%. And she's like, yeah, he's a, he's he's more than that. <laughs> I was like, what's this dude doing, eating creatine all day long? Dude, ger- what is it? German German mom, Russian yeah, dad? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I also feel sorry for competitive CrossFitters who didn't build a home gym. Yeah, dude. Yeah. They got to be losing they're... their minds. So I've spoken to a few of them uh, who don't have like you know, great facilities that they have access to like in their home home space. Mm-hmm. And most of them are, are just sort of getting by with a key card access or like a keys to their local gym and just not listening to any of the rules. Yeah. Like, you know, the, no one else is allowed to be in there. So they'll go in, they'll disinfect the place, they'll work out, they'll disinfect it and they'll leave again. And that's just the, that's just the only options that they have um, to work around it. And occasionally like some of them will take stuff back to their place with them to like, have some sort of a, you know, some, yeah, I saw that a lot, a lot of gyms were like loaning out equipment to, you know, people taking kettlebells and dumbbells. I'd, I'd be like, uh, do you have a Bob? Can I take a Bob? (laughs) (laughs) Please. I'm looking for a worm. I just just want to take one GHD. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's so fucked. Oh that's all. <laughs> when I get back, my hamstrings are just going to be just cranked. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, I, I don't know. I thought about that, like the disinfectant thing. I have Dr. Drew coming on the show on Tuesday to yeah. talk all about the virus because he's, you know, an expert to some extent. Uh, but um, he's I've, definitely a doctor. Yeah, he's internal medicine. He knows his stuff. He's no infectious yeah. disease doctor. I couldn't get one of them. But I am getting one of the top talking guys, you know, the guys that goes on TV. And he's actually the guy that's been saying this is so much media hysteria. And it's yeah. it's yeah. not as bad. And I, I just talked to a doctor. And I'm not one of those people. I call those people the people that are like deniers. I call them uh, COVID idiots. <laughs> The ones that are like, they're, they're like flat earthers. Like, it's not happening. It's not happening. This is all lives. Do you know anyone? 
Do you know anyone? Like, Bo- like Bobby? Is Bobby do- no, is that, Bobby is- believes it. He's just like, dude, he's like, eat your meat, d- you know, s- stimulate your eggs, you know, we- make sure you get your sunshine. And he's like, just keep it healthy. You, you won't have to worry about it. He's like, you know who's not worried about this shit at all? Ronnie. Yeah. I'm sorry, R- Ravi Chander. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, I believe the last time he posted about it, he said something like the world manifested it themselves in order to like test themselves. And I was like, dude, that's touchy. Yeah. You're, you're treading a fine line. Yeah. You got to be real careful what you say, because especially as people lose people, you know, I'm very nervous. But yeah. I've got a 84 year old mother that's already on oxygen. So, you know, we're doing everything we can to keep her germ free. But. You know, you don't know. You get your Amazon package, your takeout food. It's like, who sneezed on this? You know, that's that's the creepiest stuff. That's that's where the worry is. So for sure. I mean, I I would not like when people are like, I can't believe they're shutting down my gym. That's the last place you want to be. Oh no! I mean, the gym's already like one of the dirtiest places, like non hygienic places in the world. Uh, just by. Just by you know virtue of the fact that we're in there sweating, rolling around on the floor, and the little spray, like spraying where your hand goes on the barbell, doesn't do what you think it does. It's not as effective as you think it might be. So, you know, the fact that uh, the fact that we were we were all just kind of hoping to go back to our gyms where it's basically a cesspool of like MRSA, and we've all built up immunity to it anyway. Like, yeah, it's but that's what that's call. what I want to ask Doctor Drew. That's one of my questions. Is like. Can you build up an adaptation? Can you build up a, a stronger immune system because of all the bacteria and viruses that you probably interact with on a regular basis? I'd say, I mean, listen, I'm no, I'm no expert, but you know the old saying, stronger people are, are more useful and generally harder to kill. And yeah. there's a reason for that. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the, it's not just your, your immune system and your body in general are going to be really good at adapting to stimulus. And yeah, but just getting, but getting I know, I, you know, I talked to a lot of like, you know, competitive CrossFitters who get sick often because of the overtraining. Yeah. And I think when I used to be an idiot and train too much, I would get sick all the time. I I get sick now, maybe, maybe like the only, I, one time this year and it was just from, you know, I ate something bad, but, um, but I didn't get a cold or anything this entire year because I do try to like really just, if I feel like, like if I had the shit kicked out of me, I'm not working out again. I take, I take a day off or two days or whatever I need to, because I'm just, and I make sure I get the right sleep. It's more important not to be sick than to be the fittest fucking comedian in the world. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, ever since Kenny retired, you've already had that title. So I don't know. I think Rogan has it. I always forget that Rogan is, is a very successful comedian. He's, I always think of him first and foremost for the podcast. People also don't realize how crazy he is about working out. Oh, he yeah, he trains a fuck ton. His entire isn't his entire. So he doesn't he doesn't do a lot of photos, but he did like a tour of his the gym at his facility, mm-hmm. like where he does his podcast. Right. And isn't that gym? That gym looked insane. I haven't been to the new gym, but I've been to his house where he has two gyms. Yes. He has one yes. in the garage. Which is like a ring that you he like if you want to like spar, and then he's got another room that's like the workout room, and I was like, oh, you just have two gyms <laughs> at your house. I mean, when you're basically printing money, yeah, yeah, of course you do whatever you want. But uh, yeah, I'm wondering how. Look, you know, like I saw like everybody in the Olympics was like, oh no, we're not gonna have our chance at the Olympics. My buddy was training a guy for the Olympics that was going to be in for swimming. He was the second fastest 50 time in the country and freestyle. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I hope they cancel the Olympics because these guys can't train. They're stressed. They're not getting their training. It's just, it's ridiculous. So when they canceled that, I kept thinking, what are they going to do about the CrossFit games? Like this is going to throw these guys all off and you know, the qualifying and the, you know, the, all the, you know, canceling of all these events. It's, yeah. it's, it's over, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, you, you know, as well as I do that CrossFit as an organization is so happy to be the most contrarian yeah. people in the room, right? Like that's just, they thrive off of that. Um, and so 
you know, when you look at when you look at like, oh, the Olympics have postponed like their response to that is who gives a fuck what the Olympics do? We're not the Olympics. Yeah. So that said, realistically speaking, they're probably coming up against some sort of deadline to make a call like a go no go day pretty soon. I'd say I'd say pretty soon they have to make a decision Um, and not because like there's any logistical reason behind it other than to be proactive in where they're going to be come August or, you know, if they have to move it when it's going to be, because it, it, if they have to like, like what are they going to do? Right. So I've heard a few different ideas from them. One is like, okay, we'll, we'll go, uh, we'll delay it. Right. So that that's one, that's one idea. Another idea is completely canceling it and just wiping the slate clean going into the next year it's just yeah. this year just didn't happen pretty much yeah. another idea is like hold it online and just do yeah. only online competition and it's like okay well the online crossfit games is kind of lame sounding so i hope they don't do that but either way they have to make a decision soon i don't think they're going to say anything in the next like week maybe the next two weeks but i would i would imagine they're going to say something sooner rather than later yeah, well what would suck is they cancel it and then like month from now this is – I don't think it's going to be, but let's say two months from now, this is all in our rearview mirror where it's like everything's fine now. You know, We're all like ready to get back going and they're like, now we have nothing. <laughs> yeah, you know? uh, it, it is, I guess that's the risk you're taking. But but realistically, you're right. It's not, it's not going to be that way, right? Because the repercussions of this, like even if let's say, let's say this weekend – they're like, hey, it turns out there's there's uh, coronavirus. There's no more positive cases anywhere worldwide. Isn't that crazy? It'll still take like six weeks for countries to allow flights to come in without sure, it. Like, sure. it'll take. It, so there's there's a trail of repercussions. Not just there. that. I was talking to my uh, who was I talking to the other day? Was it Atel? No, uh, my promoter was going. This could be the end of comedy. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, and they were like, do you think, do you think people are going to want to congregate together after this? Like this, there's going to be a bit of a, a bit of PTSD where people are going to go, eh, you know, I know the virus is gone, but what about the next one? What about like, why do I want to be out in crowds with like, I mean, people already, I know I was like that for, from, you know, mass shooters and you know, that I was like, I don't want to go be like a sitting duck amongst a whole bunch of people where I just don't I don't like crowds and I stopped yeah. liking crowds and stopped wanting. And this is just more reason to never want to be around crowds. And I think more and more there will be people like me just going ah, this is another reason to stay away from everybody and social distance myself. That's one. of. The, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's a I don't know if that is is going to be one of like the long lasting results for sure. That's going to be a temporary result. But I I think one of the cool things about this is that it gives everybody an opportunity to like re evaluate what they do every single day and why they do it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we can, we can completely change the way we behave as a society. You know what I mean? By the time this thing is over, and make working from home more common and make, you know, homeschooling more common and make, you know, there's like, there's just a lot of different thing like, you know, uh, university, like the entire university model is going to be upended because, oh, like the world didn't fall apart when universities shut down their campuses. Yeah. So like there's, there's going to be new innovations of like how people spend their time and where they spend their time, um, you know, and yeah, I've, I've, thought, I've thought that a lot, but I, and I also think on an individual level, I think this is taking the ego out of a lot of things. Like, there's a lot because people start thinking what's important, all the bullshit goes away, all the mm-hmm. competitiveness, all the uh, you know that like, hey, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, I got to have the best car, I got to have the best this, I got to make this much money. You start going. Why did I want to do any of that shit? Like, all I want to do is be safe, be with my family, be the, the people start going, like, looking at what's important in life, and all the bullshit goes out the window. And we all know this is why I say about CrossFit, there's a lot of ego there. Oh, yeah. And so when you take this away and people go, why was I working out like that? Like, well, should I be working out for health or should I be working out so that I can beat 
Hunter at the uh, Murph Championships in May 31st if we're I might be doing it in my garage and he's in his garage but what I mean is like people it it takes the like yeah what was I what was I doing that for why was I even so a lot of people are going to reevaluate their their entire life right no I, I'm with you I think I think you're right I think um, you know there there's some of us that are a little bit more fortunate in this situation than others for sure you know like uh, there's some people who their entire income is just completely evaporated. Yeah, you thank know. you. <laughs> yeah. And- <laughs> I keep posting. I go, hey guys, here's a, here's my tour schedule for the rest of the year, and I just leave a blank. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're, yeah. Exactly. And so I think those the people who are like most most affected by the this way like you know they're stuck inside they have no income they're you know they can't see their friends they can't go outdoors like those are the people who are either going to be like completely ptsd broken and like just have to recover from this psychologically over the course of the rest of their lives or they're going to be able to kind of come out the other side stronger and more aware of of where their priorities lie and how they can make things work because you know, it's like those are the only options you kind of have. It's There's gonna, no going back it, to normal. It's going to be the start of so many stories. Like when people like years from now, they're like, so you remember COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, I was a trader on Wall Street. And now I'm a yoga instructor. <laughs> you know, that's, like all. Pro- or it's going to go the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Way. yeah. I was I loved yoga. Uh, wasn't making a dime. COVID hit. <laughs> yeah. I ended up homeless. Yeah, that's exactly uh, it. Dude, I saw, speaking of, of kind of tangent here, but I saw this guy, uh, this this uh, trading group. I forget what it was called. I'll see if I can find the details. But they, you remember like the big short? There was like a group of people in the big short who basically made, you know, billions and billions of dollars by yeah, shorting yeah. the stock market. Sure the housing market these guys put down a 27 million dollar hedge 27 million dollars that's it and they they came back out with a 2.6 billion dollar pull on on right now shorting yes right now what did they like short what did, what did they was it bonds so it, okay so it's Pershing Square Holdings that's what that's Pershing the group Square. It was. and I'll send you this link if you want to look at it yeah I would love Basically, to look at that it they 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 had a uh, they had a twenty seven million dollar hedge um, that they they basically announced at the beginning of March that they were unwinding it they were just turning it off and uh, re like taking it back because they had made two point six billion dollars off of it Jesus. at that point because they basically saw the crash coming and they were like yeah hey, they also can do this they also had a vial of a thing called <laughs> COVID nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. That they injected into some Chinese guy. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, there's um there's a you know, those hedge funds are crazy. That's why when they always talk about them, you gotta take out the outliers. I remember um the guy, Robert Mercer, who is a big Trump supporter, who created Cambridge or was the backer of Cambridge Analytica that does all the mm-hmm you know data data analysis from like facebook and stuff um he has a fund that he only lets his employees invest in because it does like 60 percent, and they Jesus. just do their whole theory is like they're ibm guys former ibm guys and they just know about big data like if you take in enough data if you have like the capacity to do it and you can then analyze the data you can predict the future because there's just so many trends with huge, huge, huge data and they do it and they just crush it. And that's, that's how they crazy. were. They were able. To, I mean, if you watch watch the documentary, I forget if it was called Hacked, but I learned all about them prior to this. Um, they. They were able to just figure out so much with Facebook and how to catered to people and what they wanted to hear and, you know, get people in their echo chambers and, and, and just constantly pump people full of like whatever they wanted to hear or send them down this road. And it, it's this, the point of it's scary that they start, you almost start losing your capacity 
to discern what is real and what isn't because you're getting so much propaganda. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Have you do you, have you read the book Twenty One Problems for the Twenty First Century? No, it's it's by the same guy uh, who wrote like Homo Deus uh, and Sapiens. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, I know about Sapiens. Yeah, so so he wrote this book Twenty One Problems for the Twenty First Century, and he talks about how one of the biggest problems that we're going to run into is the the amount by which we're allowing algorithms to make decisions for us and present us options, quote unquote options that aren't actually options. So that's exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about how basically, you know, down the line you can have, uh, and it all, it all kind of comes from, from, you know, meaningful and positive sounding, uh, like, uh, uh, decision-making points. You can say like, Oh, well, listen, wouldn't it be so cool if, uh, an algorithm could look at your purchase history and your personality and tell you, hey, this is the truck that you want, whether you know it or not. Like, this is the next car you should buy. Yeah. And uh, it's like, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. But then you can also, you know, uh, you can play with the algorithm and be like, hey, give me the illusion of choice. So they'll they'll give you, oh, you could you're going to want either this truck Ugh. or this truck. Ugh. But it knows that you're already going to pick the one truck that it knows is the best for you. And the 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 end result of this is basically like imagine a world in which all that data because now it's not just what you're looking at on your phone. It's not just like what you're buying on Amazon. It's not just what you're watching on Netflix. It's not just what your emails say, but it's turning into what your biological data is. Right. So they're talking about wearables being used to fight the next type of pandemic that's coming out like oh if everybody wears wearables that tracks like your core temperature and your resting heart rate we can find out who's sick before the pandemic even starts and we can start quarantining people and it's like well yeah you can do that but in north korea they could also look for like signs of of anger or rage when they see a picture of our dear leader and murder that person because even though they say they're part of the regime, right, they right. actually feel differently and you can't lie about your biometrics. And suddenly it becomes this really weird like almost like a Black Mirror episode of technology be- being – uh, like a red herring or like almost like the canary in the coal mine of like, Hey man, we're giving up a lot in order oh, yeah. to be, I mean, we always have, been, I mean, living, Hey, these Amish people churning their butter. Aren't so stupid. They're not. No, none of them are worried about coronavirus. I'll tell you, you know, that. it's funny if you look at like fundamentalist Islam and what, you know, not what like Osama bin Laden was fighting for, but like the Taliban, they, Look, there's so much of it that they do wrong. You know, they're kind of like stoning women stuff. I mean, that stuff I'm all for. But the stuff where they're like, you know, like, you know, you, you got to pray three times a day. That stuff's crazy. Uh, no, but if you look at like <laughs> what what they're into and their whole idea of like modernization is is bad for you. And like you trying to go back and be simplistic it's like hey, you know they got something there I, I always think it's funny that people people want to get as much money as they can and they work their whole life to get all this money and then what do they do with it they buy a farm and they go yeah live on a farm where they grow their own food and they have some cows and some chickens and they get their eggs from there and where they, they get up every morning they're like i would go for a walk down to the stream and maybe catch some fish and then we we have a dinner and you're like why didn't you just Why'd you even go work on Wall Street? You could have just got lived on a farm your whole life. Yeah, you could have just done that. Yeah, it's like my joke about CrossFit that I say uh, I'm I'm starting a new um, ex- group exercise regime, uh, and it's going to be every day you meet me at a new location. Um, we're going to start at my truck. You're going to go. I'm going to set the timer. It's four time. Whole group goes into the house. Everybody gets. You get it, any kind of furniture you can get, you can squat it, you can snatch it, you, however, you bring it out to the truck. When we get all of it in the truck, I hit the timer, we take a break. That's part A. Part B, we move to a second location and we move all the furniture into the house. It's called Move Fit and it's $250 a month. 
it's that's perfect. But it's that's like perfect. the whole idea of like flipping tires. Go get a job at a tire store. Like don't don't flip tires. Go get a job at a tire store. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that we pay to go do the things that if we just lived a simpler life, you'd have to do. Well, that's a, that, you know, I I that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to. So this could be like the chaos of all of this can be an opportunity for, you know, government and, uh, you know, big tech to take even more of our freedom and even more of our privacy under their umbrella. But it could also be an opportunity for people to realize that, hey, guys, like maybe the reason why everybody works like nine to five and school is designed the way it was is because when child labor was outlawed, they needed somewhere to put kids all day while their parents were slaving away in the factories. (laughs) And so they designed school to look exactly like that. And it's like, Oh wait, yeah, that's crazy. We're still using like 150 year old, like industrial revolution style, you know, school practices and work schedules when there's no reason to. There's no reason to. Right. Like, we can update this. We absolutely can update this. Well, how about this? What if, what if in the midst of this, there was some kind of glitch or blackout and social media went down? People would lose, uh, it. People would lose their fucking mind. You know, a lot of people would lose their minds because it would be like taking heroin away from an addict. Yep. But you know who would lose their minds the most? It would be all all the people who who are quote unquote celebrities yeah. or just real celebrities. Did, the celebrities have, did, are already did, losing their minds. They they are the worst part about this entire thing. The fucking Gal Gadot. Imagine like, people <laughs> living in a promise. I watched it. No Dude. one told me anything. I found it just when it popped up the first time. I played it. I watched it and I wrote immediately. I put it on Twitter and I go. This makes me want to get the coronavirus. <laughs> it, is, it is the most cringeworthy thing I have ever seen in my entire life. Ever. And and that's so fucking sincere. They they feel like they're so they're adding so much value to your life because they're singing this shitty fucking song to you one last time so that you can see their beautiful faces. It's like what what world did this actually make sense to you? As, yeah, as- see, I, I, I went to acting school for years and just wanted to punch everyone in the face. And it, it was, if you understand actors, they are the, they're the wor- <sighs> comedians are bad. Radio hosts are bad. Actors and actresses. Oh my God. It's they're the worst. It's the worst. Uh, Ed Norton on, um, on Rogan was really funny. He said, inside every great actor is a great actress. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, if you think about it, it's like the most feminine thing in the world. Like yeah. you play dress up, you put makeup on, you go out and play make believe. That's what it is. And that's why I look, I've n- like, I respect great actors, great actors when they do things that are incredible. But when I hear like, Oh my God, like, um, you know, the, he, he braved the cold. I'm like, no, he didn't. I know what it's like. They've got trailers. They have this, they have that. If you see the way they kiss actors asses, don't, t- he lost 30 pounds for the part and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He makes billions. Of- I, nothing makes me sicker than watching award shows when these people with yeah, the easiest dude. job in the world pat each other on the back. They call it an award season. The award season. And they it's give so them, masturbatory. And they all talk about how amazing the person was that they worked with. I would love to see that just <laughs> go down the shitter. If, they, if COVID could do one thing, I wish it would kill award season. Dude, speaking of radio... What the fuck happened with Kevin? Kevin, The weirdest fucking shit in the world. Dude, when when Bean moved, I was like, man, he's been he's been like slowly moving away from everybody. So Armin's talking about Kevin and Kevin and Bean. Kevin and Bean are it was the number one show in L.A. for like the past 25 years, 30 years and and 30 years. And they are the staple of K-Rock, which K-Rock built 
everyone from the Chili Peppers to U2 to it was like the rock station that built all these careers and everybody was on their show. Every celebrity has been on their show. The, the guys have been incredible to me. Kevin and Bean are like wonderful, amazing, had me on. That I was, was my childhood, on the show. dude. I was I listened to him every single day my entire life they, growing up. I have partly my career to thank them for. They brought me in to be their sports host. Jimmy Kimmel recommended me. I went in when I first moved to L.A. I was going to be the next Jimmy Kimmel on the show. And after day one, they called me. They're like, you're terrible. They're like, you don't know <laughs> shit about sports. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But they're like, you're really funny. And they're like, we can't have you be the sports host. You don't know. I'm like, I told Jimmy I didn't know sports. And they were like, well, why don't you just come on as a guest all the time? So they have me on on a regular basis and just have done so much and promoted me so much. And, you know, when Bean left, I understood it. He had to leave. He was, you know, just over it. But the way they removed Kevin, they Dude, literally I saw, walked I saw him out tweet. with security. Yeah. What, what? That's so ridiculous that they, he, uh, he and the team got fired over a phone call. I don't, and then they, they, I don't, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant he made a phone call. No, there was, no, no. it was just ratings were down a little bit. That stock, I shouldn't talk shit on it because I do a lot of their radio shows across the country, but that company stock has gone from like $30 a share to like a dollar a share. Oof. And the, the company is just bleeding. I mean, radio is a dying medium. Well, I mean, that's kind of what happened to Corolla and his morning show, right? Like, yeah. It was like 15 years ago when they shut down their morning show and turned it into like, you know, pop radio, like top 40 hits. But just, you don't do that. That's like, it'd be like the... It'd be like New England cutting Brady. Right. You know, like you're not going to cut him. You're going to say to him, let's figure something out. And they cut Kevin. And it was it was just really, really shitty. The yeah, guys feel, that are filling really in, bad. the new guys are great guys. I like them both. But wait, they're still keeping a morning show? Oh, yeah. It's going to be Stryker and uh, Kevin Klein. I like Stryker. I like Stryker. Kevin Klein. Yeah, both they're great cool. guys. But it was just a really douchey thing to do to remove kevin that sucks yeah and he was like there alone you know to do the show because yeah. of the virus and um he's just a great great dude and i don't know it, i'm sure he will have no problem because you know he's beloved but it, it just there's really shitty people out. and to do it like day two of this virus it's like really i understand weird, it with people in the economy and you're like you're you're hemorrhaging you're you're about to go bankrupt and you have to call your employees and go hey guys we're gonna need but there's just better ways to do it and i don't think they handled it well but they know that that was it was a big surprise to me i feel i feel really bad about it because like i said i mean that that radio show was a big part of me growing up well and... they did it to ralph too and ralph's one of the most talented guys in the world and yeah that's right yeah they did it to ralph and it was really shitty when they did it to ralph so um i don't know I don't, I don't know. I radio is a cutthroat cutthroat world. It's just, it's always like people told me when I was in radio, they were like, Hey, um, you could be gone tomorrow. And I was like, really? They're like, yeah, you just walk in and they fire you the, that day. And I go, really? And they're like, yeah, I mean, don't worry about it though. You get your contract. And they're like, so you get, you know, years pay or half a year's pay or whatever. And I was like, oh, and then they're like, you just look for a new job They're like, but they will fire you. And, uh, yeah, and it happened. <laughs> you know, I've, Dude. I've had it happen. Um, so speaking of bankrupt, I have a feeling a lot of these uh, CrossFit uh, competitions are not going to be able to weather this storm. Dude, for fucking real. It is so expensive for them to, to put on a show and knowing what date they're going to be there, having the volunteers, the staff, if they have broadcast, that's like another twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 right there. Like, they really, really need to be able to plan that stuff ahead and moving something like five weeks out or six weeks out or eight weeks out or whatever is basically impossible to recreate the same event. Well, first of all, this is just me not knowing. This is my guess. I don't think very many of them are making any money as is. Like it I would just, agree with that statement. It seems to me, you know, knowing... I know what my take home is and when I sell tickets, how much I'm making and blah, blah, blah. Granted, I don't have sponsorship of my comedy shows, but I know 
door deals and how much it costs to rent the theater, how much of this, how, how much I've got to pay taxes, how much. And, and it, there's like a sweet spot where you can make some money and the, and I look at a lot of these competitions and I'm like, whoa, you guys just lost a shitload of money. You just, oh, lost, yeah. and you might lose money for like four years, you know, where you're telling the RRS you lost money and you might've given yourself a bit of a salary to get through it, to put it on, but your, your operation is not making money. And now this could be devastating. So I know they just canceled the Melbourne comedy festival and they're not giving back the comedians, their registration fees. Like every comedian pays 500. If you're an international 700 to just register to be in it. And they were like, sorry, we Jesus. And then I heard from my promoter, I think was telling me they're not giving back your down payment on the venues. So my, my promoter promotes some big acts that will like do thousand or 1500 seat venues. So you're renting that for a month. You got to put 25% down of the, of the rental fee of the theater or the venue. Holy spot. shit. And they're just like, sorry, act of God kind of thing. Well, that's crazy. Right. So I'm thinking the same things happening to these competitions where they had, you know, the venues, they had the, they're probably losing. To, I'd love to talk to one of them. Uh, maybe I'll get Matt O'Keefe on. I, I won't, I, I don't know how much they'll talk, but, uh, I, I just don't think you'll see. Yeah. There's, there's a really good chance. I mean, listen, there was, even if everything went off without a hitch, honestly, there was a really good chance that the number of sanctioned events were going to shrink going yeah. into next year anyway, just because there's so many of them and it's so expensive to put on a good event. And so what is it? A labor of love? Big. Do they just, yeah, yeah, man, everyone thinks, well, everyone thinks that they're, you know, it's, it's going to be a couple of years or three years and they'll be able to make something out of it. And sometimes it is like that, but it's a really, really rough business. I mean, the event business is very, very rough. Um, when you, you hit, know, you hit though. I mean, you oh, make sure. some serious money and there must be, there must be some guys out there that are making a fortune that encourage these guys to do it. Cause I know with our festivals, you know, like I'll do a festival and I'll do okay. And then you'll hear about one. You'll be like, Hey, there's a festival in Perth. The guys there were all making six figures off it this year. They were like shitty open mic comics making like six figures. You gotta go. You gotta. So I'll like next year, my promoter's like, we're doing Perth and we'll go do it and not make a dime and be like, what? And like, yeah, too many people got into it this year. So I assume somebody made a fortune with an event that made a lot of these guys go, I want, I want to have a CrossFit event. I, well, you, I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you, I'll tell you where the math lies, right? So it's the same thing that we've seen people do with CrossFit gyms, the entire existence of a CrossFit gym forever and ever. Some member goes, huh? I pay you, uh, pay 200 bucks a month, huh? And how many members do you have? Tons. You have you have 200 members? Wow, you're making $40,000 a month? Okay. All right. Like, that's, that's pretty easy. Is that the math, by the way? Yeah. Four, 40, yeah. yeah. It's like, you're making $40,000 a month? Oh, that easy? No, no problem. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I'd say most of it is people thinking, well, if I'm, you know, having a thousand athletes and they're each paying $200 and I'm charging, you know, 75 bucks for a weekend ticket and it's like, yeah, if you do the math that way, it sounds like you're going to be swimming in cash, but... Yeah. You know, the expenses never are works out that way. way aggressive. Yeah. Never works out that okay. way. Okay. So then how many affiliates do you think are going to close through this? That's the, that's the more, that honestly is the more heart wrenching part of this whole thing is that affiliates are basically being forced to close down. So, you know, I think first of all, uh, most of the people that are running affiliates don't know anything about running a business. And they learn it while they're doing it. And this is a really, really big wake up call. Um, you know, it's already one of those businesses where most of the time it's hand to mouth. Like mm -hmm. you can pay yourself, you can pay maybe one or two coaches and then you're, you know, all your overhead from that point on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that they're having members who they themselves are losing their jobs and can't pay their monthly, you know, their monthly fees and they have their own expenses that are still piling up. They might need to let go of one of their coaches. They might need to not pay themselves and not need to not, they can't pay their rent or something that that is maybe one month is one month could potentially scuttle an entire business two months for sure is going to wreck a lot of these guys. Right. Um, and I, you know, they say that about restaurants. It's something like a restaurant's like one week away from like 
closing all the time and like yeah. even successful restaurants and same thing hand to mouth and and they just all it takes is like a bad so this is like two months of having to pay rent yeah you know and if they can't get an abatement or something if they're if their landlord is going to say i still want the money you know the only good thing about this is who are the landlords going to rent to that's the thing, right? If you if you get if you evict somebody, who are you going to put into their place? Right, right. And especially with commercial spaces, like what what business is going to take that spot right now and is going to be able to pay you? No one. But so, this this is where I believe a strong strong headquarters could. And I know they're the you know entrepreneurial. Hey, you're on your own kind of thing. But I think CrossFit could take the lead on this thing because it would behoove CrossFit to go out there and say. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna fight on your behalf to to act like and I'm I hate the federal government and I hate a strong you know I like yeah. but to say hey you know hey you you had faith in us we're gonna we're gonna stick our necks out for you to try to keep you open as long as possible and yeah like lobby it basically yeah I, I'm with you on that you know I think I think they are doing. Um, like they haven't announced anything. I don't know when you're going to publish this or whatever, but I, I Tonight, just had a call. Tomorrow. Whatever. I, I just had a call with, uh, you know, people like very high up at, at CrossFit involved in trying to make these decisions. They're like, we put, we put company wide, we put everything on the back burner and are now trying to focus on how we can help the affiliates. That's and great. Their, their solution to that is like one, they are, uh, they're like, they're, they're either discounting or completely stopping affiliate fees. That's great for affiliates that are forced to close. And two, they're going to be holding like, um, like a charity kind of CrossFit games open thing, like starting next week, basically that is going to run for three weeks. And when you sign up, you can, it's like free to sign up or you can just donate however much money you want. And then you pick a gym and that money goes directly to that gym. So they, they will, it's just like direct funnel through to like pay the gym. That's basically. great. Kenny, so Kenny, Kenny was saying that with, with his gym in particular that, you know, people want it to survive. So there's members going, what do you, what do you need? Like, what can I do to help you stay open? Uh, you know, I love this community. I love this. And I, I, I watched Dave Matthews concert yesterday on, mm-hmm. on Yahoo. And um, he was saying, you know, things you can do right now if you think about like the gig economy or people that like your hairdresser or your nail person or your coffee your barista or whatever people that you see every day but now aren't getting he's like they have like tip jars online and he's like go on there and buy your next five haircuts now say here's for my next five haircuts like go buy so why not just go pay your gym now and say here i'm paying for the next five months or whatever. And I like, maybe it's, you know, the way they're doing with mortgages, the way they're doing right. with carpet where they're like, okay, you're, you're basically on hold right now, but you're, you're paying you your term longer. Like, you know, I know everything was month to month in CrossFit, but you're buying these extra two months. Yeah. You know, like, let's say it's two months. They're shut down. Cause I, I just feel bad. I feel like so many, so many gyms and I know so many owners and they're great people. And, so many are going to get shut down out of this. Yeah. And, and I, think I think CrossFit was already in a bit of a bind with losing a lot of affiliates. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's the affiliate, the affiliate landscape is going to look really different after this for sure. Um, well, well this week. So I know that there are two different big sort of like charity type things that are being planned for starting a week from today. So starting on April 3rd, um, and one of them is organized by CrossFit and one of them is organized by uh, the Loud and Live crew. They just started a new charity. What is it? What is it called? United in Movement, I think is what they're calling it. Um, and that one's going to be a shorter one. That one's going to be like a week long. Um, and they're going to have a different like workout every day. And they're going to have opportunities for people to donate based off of that. And they have like prizes and a bunch of corporate sponsors and stuff like that. And all that money is getting you know, funneled back into affiliates and individuals as well. So I know that there's, there's very, very driven, really smart people working on trying to you come up with a solution for this. Give, give me a number. You guys owned it. Does your brother still own a gym? No, no, we okay. sold, uh, I left in 2015. He sold in 2016. Okay. So that's, you know, a different time, different prices, but, uh, 
what would you say to keep your gym open for a month with like, what would your overhead be? And you wouldn't have the same overhead cause you're not operating. So what kind of overhead is a gym looking at to stay open for a, like a month that they're not have with zero income? I mean, we had, we had, uh, you were California, five, so you're a little higher than everywhere else. Yeah. So we were in LA. We had a, we had like 2,500 square foot retail space that we were paying, uh, around 10 grand a month, somewhere mm. between nine and 10 grand a month for rent. Mm. Um, we had three full time coaches. So we were paying for, you know, that they were W2, so they weren't 1099. So we were paying taxes on them. And, you know, state of California is even more fucking crazy when it comes to sure. business taxes and payroll taxes. Um, I mean, all in, if, if it was like, you know, just looking at expenses, we're probably touching something like 20 grand, maybe 25 grand in expenses, uh, with all of our insurance and, uh, you know, like, you know, lease and payroll. And it's, it's big. I mean, that was, and we were a successful gym, by the way, like we were paying our bills. Uh, you know, there were a couple times and I'm, I'm pretty proud of this, but there were like, there were a couple times where, you know, I had to delay a paycheck make sure our coaches were getting paid. And I was like, all right, I'll take, uh, you know, in, in three weeks, I'll take it in th- three weeks or I'll take it in a month. Right. But, but, but how many, then, how, like how many gyms can make $25,000 and then it's, 25 it's rough, again? dude. Yeah. It's rough. That's exactly it. Right. Because they're going to all have to eventually ask if they've got full-time employees, if they're not 1099, they're going to have to say, Hey, we, we can't keep you. So that's the thing. Like, I I think one of the most important things that if an affiliate owner is listening to this, one of the most important things that they can do is educate themselves on what what they can do as business owners. So, like, the big three things that I would focus on. One is to look at the new uh, stimulus package. Yeah, but because in the stimulus package, there might be, as far as I read it, and I haven't gotten a chance to dive in enough, but it looked like there were forgivable payroll loans. So you basically you can take payroll loans based off of your average payroll and you can pay off uh, uh, your payroll and you get up to 100 percent forgiveness on that loan as long as your payroll averages stay the same. Wow. So as long as you're still employing your your uh, your employees, as long as you're still paying them, those payroll loans get forgiven. That's one thing to look up and really anything in that stimulus package but another thing is you mentioned it right there small business loans so so sba loans are really important um that'll give you an opportunity to get some like working capital with very very low interest rates another thing to look at is to see whether your state or your local government has uh put in commercial eviction moratoriums where basically if your business is impacted due to closures due to covid or covid uh you can literally tell your landlord to go kick rocks if yeah. they try and evict you. You'd be like, no. And on top of that, some places have not only put in eviction moratoriums where it's illegal for landlords to evict you, like for you know two months, like through through May or through June or whatever. Um, not only that, but they also have required deferment, so you can defer what you owe them for like you know five months or six months. This so you is have this, time to. This is great and everything, but if, if you think about it, the ruck just keeps getting kicked down the line, and it's like Abs- but, absolutely. But at the, some point, you but, have to make the money back. But but the problem it. is, it's like, what about all these landlords? <laughs> what about that's all these right. landlords that everyone's like, "Hey, fuck you, fuck you for collecting money on so your tenants." Th- that's the thing. Like the I spoke to when I the first time I actually talked about this uh, on on like my my channel, I got immediately I got some uh, like negative feedback basically from landlords but they were mostly residential landlords they were like hey man what am i supposed to do like my residents are trashing my place and leaving and this and that's like well i don't i don't know what and what to do in that situation and i don't think landlords are are evil i don't think they're like bad people they're in their own business and it's their own business sense like to me it's it's not good business for them to try and evict anybody anyway because like you said who are you going to get in to take the spot of like a restaurant that you're yeah. evicting or, uh, you know, are you going to put in the money for a tenant improvement 
to like change the look of a restaurant. No, man, nobody just, has any you, money right now you, anyway. And you can't do it. You're in the you middle can't. of a shutdown. No one right, can so you, come in and do the work. No one can. Yeah. No one's going to come buy. And no, no one's opening a business right now. So like all these protections are in place to make sure that, you know, tenants don't get screwed over by landlords acting irrationally. Sure. And there are there there have just like anybody else like SBA loans like those apply to landlords as well because those are businesses you yeah. just have to you just have to know where to look you know what yeah. I mean I just think for me the fact of the matter is like if you're a commercial landlord you probably already have a good idea of where your rights are and where your leverage is as opposed to a personal trainer who took out a hundred thousand dollar loan to open a CrossFit gym last year, like who's never run a business before and doesn't understand where and, and how they can take advantage of the system to help themselves in situations like this. You know, I think, I think there's one party there that deserves to be educated on what they can and can't do. Yeah. Haven't heard a word from Glassman. Have you? No, I haven't spoken to him directly. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen him on anything. Haven't like, it's funny. This would, uh, I would expect him to be like super opinionated. I imagine his opinion is something like CrossFit could fix this <laughs> as in the health, the health aspect of it. Like CrossFit <laughs> could fix this. Like that would be my guess is what his opinion is of it. Um, you know, and there's like, there's a certain, t- a certain extent that that's correct in the idea that like, Oh, it's comorbidities that, that really yeah. put people out when it comes sure. to, it's like, yeah, well the biggest comorbidity in the U S is being fat and out of shape. And yeah. Yeah. guess what? CrossFit helps that. So yeah, I guess the argument makes sense to a certain extent, sure. but uh, yeah, he's been, he has been, he has been Ex- uncharacteristically silent. Explain the Italian guy that lived in Belgium that uh, the judge that, that died from COVID. Did you Wait, see that? what happened? No. There was a judge, uh, many of the competitions, I think even the games. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and saw he that. was I a saw that. he was an Italian guy, but he, he was in Belgium when he that's where he's been living. I think he was forty five years old or something. I yeah, could, he was I young. could be wrong. And got it, died. Don't know, you know, for all we know he could have had some kind of underlying health condition, but usually people aren't doing CrossFit with you know, heart disease. And they do. Maybe yeah. he did. Um, but I do think there are people that they might be anomalies, but there are people dying from this that didn't exist. Um, yeah, for sure. For and sure. so, you know, you can be all, all in shape as you want to be, but at the end of the day, but statistically, is that going to happen to you? I mean, we do know now, I think what is it? 80, 80% of people are going to recover and be fine from this. It's like, 16% are going to be hospitalized and 4% are going to die. Um, yeah. It's, well, I mean, I mean those, are, those are, those are numbers. I'm, I'm throwing out numbers that are so ambiguous. And so the, the numbers change constantly and depending on it. So don't hold me to anything. But I love that when people right now try to throw out numbers because a, we don't know how many people have this. I mean, there's no, there's no idea to know. I mean, the numbers could be 10 times, a hundred times what we think they are. The testing doesn't, practically exist. I have a buddy who has it right now who has done everything to get tested. He and his girlfriend have it and they want to get tested and they're like in line to get tested, but she's uh, a nurse and has to go back to work in like a week. And they were kind of, they kind of gave them the sit it out, you know, like you're, you're okay. You just like, you know, you've got a fever and the shakes and you're sick and coughing, but you're probably going to be okay. And she's like, yeah, but I have to go back to work. So maybe we should know if I have this <laughs> and yeah, seriously, it's that hard to get a test. So yeah, Katie, Katie was working in the ER. Uh, I mean, this was, we had already planned for her to leave, uh, to leave working in the ER because she was working in a space that was like over an hour away. So she would drive like an hour and 20 minutes, do a 12, 13 hour shift and drive an hour and 20 minutes wow. back. And she did that for a little over a year, like about 13 months. And we'd already planned for her to sort of put in her notice and leave uh, and look for a new job, you know, after a couple months of like helping me out and traveling with me and stuff. And, you know, she left before any of the, like before any of this really, kicked off like she left in like late february i want to say um 
or like mid February. And so she just got a new job working at like a clinic that's like closer to us, but isn't in emergent medicine. So she's mm-hmm. not like, she's not going to be on the front lines anymore, which sure. is, it's like both a bummer in the sense that like she has a lot of skills that would help in that situation, sure. but it's also kind of a relief because you know, she gets to be in a more controlled environment and she doesn't really have to worry about that much exposure and it's still consistent work. And, you know, it's in, it's in a field that she wants to be in. So I, I honestly can't even imagine if she was still working in the ER, what it would be like right now. Cause it, they're just so understaffed and they're so spread thin. Like I feel really bad for that entire, entire I have, I have, population. I have, we have a, my wife's friend who is, um, same thing. Like she's just finishing her clinical or whatever to become a nurse and she's like this is what i trained for this is what i want to do and i was like right oh jesus you know like it's one thing when you're going i mean i guess it's kind of like being in war and you know you don't know where the bullets are coming from uh so you know there's that you you can be gung-ho and everything but at the end of the day you don't know what's going to get you what isn't um i've heard both i've heard You know, these hospitals being understaffed, not having masks, not having ventilators. And I've also heard people, friends of mine, they're like, yeah, we're we're stocked up, dude. We're fine. Like, I don't know what they're talking about. And I think it depends. Right. I don't know what the difference is. but I think it it does, too. And these hospitals are all owned by different groups and different associations or different corporations. And how they've prepared is probably different than the hospital across the street has prepared for it. And um, so. You know, I I don't trust most stuff the media says, but I also don't trust the other side of it, which all thinks, you know, that the media is a complete conspiracy and, right. you know, propaganda, you know. So I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle and uh, we're all going to die. Yeah, 100%. I think both those things are true. Yeah. I uh, I don't want it. I'm, you know, me, I've got that clethrophobia, fear of being trapped. I already feel it being in this house. All the time. Can't ima- <laughs> Did you see the people in Italy that they just like, they just had like a cylinder on their head? No. The, the ventilators. What, is, what are these things that you're seeing? Oh God. I'm I totally missing I get out. the worst. I got one funny video of like two people in the grocery store with just plastic bags on the their heads. The plastic bags on their heads. <laughs> yes. Yes. But dude, um, in Italy, I think they had some. I don't know what a ventilator looks like. I mean, I know about the breathing tube and everything, but, and my mom has a BiPAP, so I've seen that. Uh, but the, they looked like that they were wearing those, almost those old scuba outfits, you know, the, <laughs> <laughs> like the bell helmet. Like almost. Bell helmet. <laughs> it was, no, it was more like a goldfish ball on their head. And, <laughs> and I'm just looking at it and I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to get this. I don't. I, I'd so much rather die in so many other ways than to have this like goldfish ball on my head. That's not how I want to Yeah, go you'll out. die from the claustrophobia than you would from the uh, the, clo- the the actual coronavirus. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll be like, take it off. I'll just let me die. I can't. Oh, there's been times. So, clethrophobia is like a fear of being trapped. Okay. And I, like, I thought I just got it like 10 years ago, but I realized all these moments earlier in my life. There was one time I was on a chairlift with a friend and it got stuck and ch- stopped. And, ch- you know, I ski grew up skiing like every day of my life and they always stop, you know, stop. And then they start again. Sometimes, you know, back in the day, it could have been 20 minutes where it wouldn't start up. Well, at a certain point, they evacuate the chairlift. Well, we're sitting there and it's like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. 30, and all of a sudden I just start having a full on panic attack. No, and I just start freaking out. And in my head, I was thinking, and we were probably 30, 40 feet in the air. I'm like, jump off. Just jump off. Like it, <laughs> anything would be better than being trapped here. And I'm talking to my friend Kevin, who's my best friend in the world. And I'm like, I, I don't know. It's, I, I can't be here. We gotta, why isn't this moving? I gotta. And he just punched me in the face. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's amazing. And he goes, shut up, you pussy. (laughs) And I was like, and it was one of those, you know, when you see somebody just lose it and someone smacks them in a movie and it brings them back to no, I completely snapped you out of it. I looked at him and like, if Kevin and I were to fist fight, I could take Kevin, but I looked at him like, the fuck did you do that for? Like, I'll kill you. (laughs) And he was like, just shut up just shut up. And I was like, all right. (laughs) And it, it really did snap me out of it. But 
I mean, because there were thoughts in my head of jumping off of like, I can't handle this. I I need to jump off. I used to have it on airplanes where I was like, I got to get out of here. Like it, when the plane would land and they'd be like, hey, we don't have a gate open and we're going to sit here for a while. I would. That's when it would kick in. And I used to yeah. think, am I going to get arrested <laughs> <laughs> if I go pull the emergency exit right now and slide down yeah. the slide? You would. Like the JetBlue flight attendant. Be that guy. But you would. Yeah. So, uh, th- so that's the, uh, the I love. I, did you see? Did you see that guy? I think it was in Jackson Hole. Got stuck on the side of a cliff. He was like he was skiing, and uh, he hit. He was hitting like these, um, like terrain. So it was like off off piste or whatever mm-hmm. it's called, off trail mm-hmm. terrain. And it's like right as the lift is going up, you can see it. And he's he had fallen off the edge of a cliff, but had sort of like skied into him like hugging the wall with like one of his feet in still in a ski on like a very tiny little lip and he was just like hugging the wall like 15 or 20 feet below the edge and like a hundred feet oh. <laughs> over, over the bottom please tell me they like, saved him yeah yeah so the the it was really impressive i mean this the the team like the ski rescue like snow rescue or whatever went up to the top found where he was from the top and laid uh, down like, ro- yeah they sent they sent a, a, a rope down for him to so repel to, like, down yeah 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 so yeah, was, those guys really do, do lifeguards everything they all do uh uh they do uh dustin fierro who's been on the show who you remember mm-hmm. was the paddleboarder he does that cliff rescue down in san diego all the time because people constantly going down to Black's Beach, down to the nude beach. Yeah. Uh, people fall there all the time that just shouldn't be going up and down that trail. And they have to go down and ropes and everything and pull them out. But uh, the scariest was, did you see the video? It was maybe like a year or two ago when the guy was going parasailing with another guy, no. his instructor, and the instructor never clipped him in. Didn't that guy die? No. He held on. So he's going, Oh yeah, he held on the entire time. The entire time he held on using brute strength. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and tore his bicep. Tore his bicep doing it. That's crazy. But that's all he walked away with was a torn bicep when I mean at any moment he could have just you know, in every movie where they're holding on and they just yeah, can't yeah. hold on and they let go. He held on. He held on till they hit the ground. That's crazy. And I watch that video and my hands sweat the entire time. <laughs> knowing knowing that he lived, I still sweat. Dude. Yeah. That is wild. Yeah. Can you imagine just someone no. saying, you've got to hold on until we get this thing down? I have nightmares that's, like that. That's crazy. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I have nightmares about. Like literal nightmares. Like I wake up and I'm like, oh my God. Okay. That's, it's not real. But I was holding on to something. Two more pull-ups, Eddie. Three or would have two hundred? No, hundred. Only hundred pull-ups. 100, 100, I would. Yeah. I would rather switch it in Murph and go two hundred pull-ups, hundred push-ups. Sure, because you can kip pull-ups. Yeah, they're so easy, especially <laughs> in fives. They're so much easier than push-ups. So much easier. The push-ups are awful. I always feel like a little bitch doing push-ups in Murph because I always have to get down to like doubles and triples. Oh yeah. No matter how good I am at push-ups, it, it always falls apart. Well, I used to say that the uh, the push-ups with the vest, if you stack your vest the way I did it, yeah, and you put it out about eight inches. <laughs> 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 They're like, why are all your bars in the same pocket? <laughs> and I would have my chest so big that my push-ups would be like an inch. I'm like, oh, I'm going the whole way down, chest to chest to ground. Is is uh is do you know if do you know if Hunter's going to use one of those plate carriers or is he going to use like a classic vest or something? Plate He's carrier, use a plate, plate carrier. Plate carrier right? You got to go deeper. Yeah, because it 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 sits flush. I'm going to make him use a plate carrier. Yeah, yeah, it sits flush. Yeah, good, good. Uh, but you know what? If he can break thirty four, which I'm sure he can't. I don't think I can go any any faster Dude, than that's really fast even like doing it your way that's crazy fast like that's that's partition two, that's two seven it. minute miles which are really yeah. fast and and 20 rounds of cindy in the middle yep that's almost that's, a, that's, that's aggressive impo- i would say th- even 35 would be tough 35 yeah, that's aggressive dude 
back in the day, maybe I could have done it now. So, uh, you know, it'll, I think I did it last year. I think I did like 38 or something when I did it at CrossFit Malibu. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong. I can't remember, but, uh, I was, I started with the five, 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 15, five, and then I switched because I didn't like getting up and getting down. It was just like adding three or four burpees into it. So I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I getting up, getting back? I just stay on the ground. (laughs) You know, like I'll take my break down here. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know but our friend wants to put up the money for me against him. I got nothing to lose. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way of looking at it. But Hunter wants to go up against like he wants to go up against like the best in the world. And he's like, find them. Where are they? Who are they? Come at me. So if anybody thinks they're the best in the world, he's challenging anyone. He like he's like I mean he's like military, fireman, you name it, whoever you are, you don't have to be a crossfitter. He wants he wants to go like he wants to make a big I deal. I would say about it. Arguably, the the best the best in the world will be a CrossFitter. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Um, it'll be you know it'll be a short CrossFitter, a guy with like a gymnastics background. It'll be like a Noah Olson or like a BKG or a Josh Bridges or you know even Rich or Matt would be arguably one of the best in the world at that. Uh, oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Uh, what's the deal with the uh, Castro uh, the 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 fight going on with Castro and? Um, What's his and name? Pat Vellner. Pat Vellner. Oh, is dude, that a joke? I don't know. I don't know if it's a joke. I think I think it's like a combination of a couple things. Like Dave, one, he knows how to he knows how to sell things. Like he knows how to promote things, and he wants to promote that that documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's like trying to pick a fight for it, which is you know whatever. Two, Wait, is that documentary it, out? Yeah, it came out on on iTunes earlier this week. Oh, so it's not on um, Netflix. It's on iTunes. not on Netflix. Yeah, I think in a couple weeks it should be on Netflix. Okay. Maybe three weeks, four weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, also, I mean, another part of it is that he's he's very very protective. Like he's kind of has like a fragile ego about it. Like speaking of fragile you know, egos, I was gonna go um, buy it and watch it, but the Buttery Brothers um, they blew off my interview, so I'll wait till it comes out on Netflix. Did they really? Did they really blow? Yeah, off I, where was I that I was gonna interview them and? Uh, where do they live? I was in Utah. Yeah, they're and, they're in and uh, we got in contact and we were going to meet up and then it turned into like, hey, hey, bro, we're too busy. And I was like, okay. So you hear that Hebrew in Mars? Yeah, I'm in it. Yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm in it. I'm in it. Uh, you know, a lot of people. So saw do you have, it you have an I, like, you have an IMDb credit now? It's, it's not my first one. What's I, your first? I, think I have. I don't know. I think I, I've been in a couple other things before. I'm somewhere. I, I know. Uh, I have no idea, man. Probably. Maybe, I don't think so. Not in movies. I've been in like I've been in commercials and I've been in like shorts. Whatever. It's L.A. You're in everything. Yeah. You know what I mean, like you just you just like fall into shit. Yeah. Every, everybody has an IMDb page in L.A. Um. Yeah, I I'm in it, and a lot of people were telling me like, oh, they, they they kind of do you dirty, like they make you look. They like try and make fun of you in it. And I was like, all right. I mean, I don't really care, but okay. Like I'm curious to see what it is. And they basically use this clip of me. So they, they kind of are talking about all the changes in like the CrossFit game season and how, you know, the media at CrossFit got fired and like, you know, no one knows who to listen to and and where to get their news from. And they have this clip of like Matt Fraser basically saying like, yeah, man, it's kind of crazy. Like, you know, there's no more official CrossFit Games media, and now you have people just sort of grabbing a camera and like talking into it, being like the main source of news of like what's happening in the space. And it like cuts to me, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like that's literally that's the only hilarious. Clip that, it's like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then they like go back to like, you know yeah. what though? I know like I've edited a, a documentary film before. And they're just looking at footage, and they're like, "This fits here. This looks that's, funny." That's how I feel. Yeah, about it. that's not a dig. Now the digs, the, the, thing, the, like, the like, digs they did at Hunter were digs. The digs they did at Hunter were digs. Yeah, and I mean, they in the in the final product they didn't include any of that stuff. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Though, so in the in the actual final movie, they 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 didn't include any of the stuff with Hunter. Oh, good. Um, which is good. I think it's good. It did. It wouldn't have had a place. No, it, you know what I mean. But uh, that's I don't thing. know. He was a big story of the games. 
I think I agree. I agree that he was a big story of the games, but they weren't interested in telling that type of a story for the games. They wanted to do very similar to what they had done in the past. Mm-hmm. And that's what it feels like. It yeah. feels like one of the other movies that they've done. It's like, you know, they, they tell the story of what happened after the 2018 games and how the entire season gets blown up. And, you know, there's all this doubt about how the season is going to come together in 2019. And then they tell the story of the 2019 games, like event by event by event. Mm. So, well, they're going to have a good story for 2020. The, I don't think they're doing one this year. Really? Which is great because you know I think it would have been really hard for them to pull it off to to do two in a row. But what do you think's going on in Cookville right now? <laughs> a lot of fitness. I'll do tell you, you think? That. Do you think they're like compounded down and it's like you don't leave the compound? This is where we stay. We just work out all day long, <laughs> or that's yeah. what they always did. Yeah, I think I think Matt and Tia. So Matt and Tia both live in Cookville now, right? And uh, they train like mostly out of mayhem, but also out of Matt's garage. So they're they're I know for a fact they're still getting after it, <laughs> like not as hard as they were before because there's no events for them to train for specifically. Mm-hmm. But they're still getting after it. Um, and I know that the same thing's going on with Rich. I was talking to Rich earlier this week about like how they're doing because like you're right. They ha- he has like a he has Froning Farms. He has like an off the grid compound basically yeah. already. Yeah. So he doesn't have any reason to worry. So for him, like this doesn't really change any of his behavior. Um, you know, it's not it's not anything crazy for him. And I don't think Tennessee is being hit that hard. Oh, actually, it is Nashville, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I saw all those people partying in Nashville. I saw a statistic, though. Kentucky and Nashville both handled it differently. Uh, somebody did the comparison saying like Kentucky shut down immediately and said, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this where Tennessee was like, yeah, you know, we're going to, we're going to wait a little bit. And it showed the different, it was an argument to say and why you do the, like, um, what do you call it in place or whatever? Shelter in place, shelter in place, yeah. shelter in place. Um, yeah, well, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, I'm going to now, Go drink some booze. That's what I've been doing. Now, Hell yeah. I've had like two drinks since the whole thing. Um, but, uh, and I try to work out in the garage, but my kids don't let me. <laughs> I never get to work out ever. It's terrible. Uh, I go on hikes every day though. That's my you exercise. are going to want to work out if you're going to try and take on. No, I'm going to. I'm going to stay. What would you do? How would you train for that? Uh, I would, I would have like two days a week. That's just running intervals. Mm hmm. So that you can get your leg endurance up. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have uh, a day a week that you do like some sort of uh, volume version of either all three of the middle movements plus a little bit of running or rowing or biking or just two of the middle movements plus a little running, rowing or biking. I would do like variations of pushing and pulling. So like if you have a rope, climb it. If you have a dip station, do dips, you know, like do that type of volume as well. Uh, Maybe add a little bit of bench press, like some volume bench press. But really what you have to do is just get your body ready to like, you have to get your body ready for a 30 to 35 minute event. You have to have the volume for your pushups to improve and pushups improve pretty quickly anyway. Yeah. And you have to have the sort of like running capacity so that that last mile doesn't bury. It's all the last mile. Like you have to basically treat it like triathlon. Like you have to do brick training. Yeah. So you have to do like run, squat, run workouts, you know? Yeah. Cause you got it. You, it's all about that last mile. Cause you could end up losing two minutes on that last mile. Yeah. If you blow out, yeah. whatever, so, whatever so, your, whatever your mile, your first mile is, if you disrupt yourself too much, you're going two minutes slower. It, but yeah. If, it, but if you, at can, least it, if you can keep it, you can pretty much gauge how fast you're going to do it by your Cindy yeah. time. You know, I always, I always would go a little slower on the first mile to just walk in and do start Cindy right away with like, you know, not breathing too hard and just like, yeah, I got this thing. Um, but to beat him, I mean, he's going to, he'll probably do a six and a half minute mile, even with the vest on. Yeah. I'd say that's fair. I'd say even that might be a little slower than he actually runs. Not with the vest. I don't know, man. And Hunter's crazy. 12, 13. If he did that 13 minutes, then he, yeah, then he's got a 20 minutes Cindy. Easy. Yep. 
Yeah, he's doing. So he's, he's doing about six and a half minute miles. I he's bet. crazy. He is, and he isn't. You know, we'll we'll see. Um, but if you have any ideas of anyone that can beat them, throw them to us because we'll have them go up against them when we all get out of our shelters. When we, we'll, I call it BC and AC before Corona, after Corona. So AC. <laughs> 2020, yeah. 2020 AC. Good, when we all good. get when we all get to see each other again and not on a screen. Wait. Um it's been awesome talking to you. Um everybody knows where to find you at uh Of course. At you're all over everything now. Your your name pops up everywhere. Um but you guys he's got the best YouTube channel if you want to find anything out about CrossFit. Armin's the guy to go to. Um, Thanks, Eddie. I appreciate that. And I talked to Scott yesterday to see how he's doing through this whole thing. Um, and he said he's basically running like a command center. It's like, yeah, that's what he said when I talked to him too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was worried about him. You know, cops are at like the front line of this shit. And I feel like cops, you know, nurses, doctors, and then like Amazon employees. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. The delivery, like last mile delivery. Yeah. yeah. Like I just feel so bad for them. I see them coming and I feel bad for them too. Cause they walk in my driveway and I'm like, yeah, eh, 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 get away from me. Just man. drop the package right there. Drop it, yeah. drop it, drop it. Don't make me get the lights all. <laughs> I will spray you back into that truck. So no, uh, it, yeah. is, it is really cool to get to get, get a chance to catch up and yep. hang out for a little bit. I'm glad to see that you and the family are doing well. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if we are. I might get a beating right after this. <laughs> I, I, I just saw Lauren. It looks like I did something wrong. Uh, so, uh, and I do a live show every night. Usually I'm not doing one tonight cause I did this, but I do stand up live from my, from my hearth. I just stand up at the fireplace and do 10 minutes of material every night because that's what I do for a living. And now I can't do it. I'm like, I better like, it's like basketball. You get rusty if you don't do it. But yeah, the challenge now is. I'm usually doing a set every night that is a tried and true set. And I might throw in a new bit every night. I'm doing eight new bits every single night. And then I don't perfect them either. They're all throwaways because when this is, when we get into AC, you know, 2020 (laughs) AC, none of these jokes are going to work. So they're very relevant now, but they're not going to be relevant when this is over. And the other thing is you can't do other material right now because nobody can think I, I went through this with nine 11. Nobody wants to do anything else like, or talk about anything else. So you're like, what's the deal with taxis? People are like, I don't know. I haven't been in a fucking taxi, you know, since, <laughs> you know, like, like it, it, it's not relevant. You have to, uh, so I'm just trying to do new material every night and I get like people going, Hey, this is great. We really need this. And then I get other people going like, the fuck you're a professional and i'm like fuck you (laughs) asshole i hope you get covid um i didn't mean that anyway thanks for listening to the wadcast armin thanks for being a guest tonight uh next week dr drew dr drew will be here to answer all your covid questions so i'm going to put them out on facebook and instagram and you guys can ask your questions i know i have a thousand for them so i'm sure you do armin we wish you the best of luck you guys stay safe um and uh you know keep uh keep doing what you're doing because you are you you are the you're the media <laughs> yeah yeah as 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 sad as that is it's yeah. very true yeah thank you dude okay we'll see you later dude.